Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome here to the launch pad. You're looking at a live view of Slick 4E at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. If it's your first time here, welcome. My name is Zach. I'm the founder and host here at the launch pad. And here at TLP, it's our mission to inform and inspire the explorers of tomorrow because we believe that space is better together. And we're glad to have you joining us live here tonight. Take a moment. Let us know in the chat where you're watching from. We're going to do some shout outs quickly, but as we are now just under four minutes and counting till launch, we're going to run through everything we know about today's vehicle and then we'll dive into some of those shout outs there today's starlink launch is group 7-17 targeting a now instantaneous launch window at 10 uh 909 p.m local time or 1209 a.m eastern it's instantaneous as spacex has now begun propellant loading on falcon 9 as you can see with all the venting and they're really just starting to finish topping up those boosters tanks in preparation for today's flight Today's Falcon 9 booster is booster 1063 going for its 17th flight, having previously supported Sentinel-6, Michael Freelich, Dart, Transporter-7, Iridium-1 Web, SDA-0B, and 11 previous Starlink missions. SpaceX's autonomous drone ship, of course, I still love you, is stationed downrange in the Pacific Ocean. So if you are in Los Angeles, San Diego, somewhere in the Baja, or maybe on a cruise in the uh, Pacific, tonight's your night. You might be able to see tonight's flight, depending on your current weather conditions in the region. If you do happen to see it, take a photo or a video. Make sure you tag us on social media at either at TLPN underscore official on X or at the Launchpad Network work on Facebook or Instagram, or you can drop it to us in our Discord, which is free for everyone to join, and we welcome you to join us in there, because that's where our community hangs out in between streams. T-minus 2 minutes, 30 seconds, and counting. Falcon 9 is basically fully fueled, ready for flight. At the T-minus 1 minute mark, that is when Falcon 9 will take over the computers and do final pre-flight checks, as well as pressurize its tanks for flight. T-minus 45 seconds, that's when we're going to have that final go-no-go -no -go from the launch director. Now, as we get into those shout-outs of where you guys are watching from, we also hear at those final two minutes, always do a final go-no-go -no -go from you in the chat. If you happen to be a TLP member on YouTube, you can use those custom TLP launch emojis. If you want to become a member, just hit the join button down below. Just a couple bucks a month gets you access to those and gets you behind the scenes here at the launch pad. It also helps us going to expand and bring you better coverage of everything space, including the development and expansion of our first 24-7 camera down at Starbase and rolling out more of those around the world over the coming months and years. And that's only thanks to your guys' generous support. T-minus 90 seconds and counting. We're going to listen into SpaceX for the final call-outs. But it's great to have so many of you joining us here from really all over the world. I see Bahamas, yeah, Arizona, India, Costa Rica, USA, Newfoundland, California, Kentucky, Alberta, Orlando, Florida, Maine. Great to have you all joining us here. If you haven't yet, take a moment, engage the like button, share out the stream, invite people to join us. So we are now just T-minus uh, one minute, 10 seconds, and counting till launch. We're listening for that call out of the flight computers to take over the count. Falcon 9 is in startup. And there's that call out, T minus 55 seconds, waiting for the final go no go from the launch director for launch. Weather was looking good for tonight's flight, T minus 50 seconds. LD is go for launch. And there's that call from the launch director giving that final go. Now, Falcon 9 at any point could still call an abort to its count, but everything is looking good. T minus 35 seconds and counting. If you haven't yet, take a moment, share out the T stream, invite seconds. people to join us as we watch the final 30 seconds and counting. I'm going to be quiet. We're going to listen to the final sights and sounds of Falcon 9 to launch, and I'll be back to bring you commentary through the flight. But let's listen in as we're T minus 20 seconds and counting to launch a SpaceX Starlink 7 17 from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. T minus 12. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition. And lift off of Falcon 9. Go Starlink. Go SpaceX. Vehicles pitching downrange. T plus 15 seconds into Stadium flight. Falcon 9 is flying nominally from Slick 4E at Vandenberg in California. Coming up at 1 minute 9 seconds into flight, the vehicle experienced the peak mechanical stress on the rocket, also known as Max Q. We'll be waiting for that call out. 
T plus 35 seconds into flight, the vehicle now traveling already over 600 kilometers an hour, heading downrange over the Pacific Ocean. If you're in Los Angeles or San Diego, run outside. Now's your chance to possibly see tonight's flight. Power T telemetry nominal. You can hear there the call out that the vehicle is still performing nominally. T plus 50 seconds. Now about 15 seconds away from that moment of max Q. We'll listen for the call out. Vehicle is supersonic. Max Q. And there's that good call that we wanted to hear. The next uh, moment, uh, major moment in flight, will be the beginning of a large sequence of events that starts off with first stage main engine cutoff, or MECO, 2 minutes 28 seconds into flight. Over the 35 seconds following that, we'll have first and second stage separation. Second engine start, also known as SES-1 or MVAC ignition. Grid fin deploy on the first stage, and then fairing deployment as well. You heard there a call out for the MVAC engine chill. Just like they chill the 9 Merlin 1Ds on the first stage, they chill the single vacuum version on the second stage in preparation, but a lot closer to its ignition, as it's going to ignite in just about 45 seconds from now. That sequence of events expected to start here in about 30 seconds, so we're going to listen for those call outs. If you have questions, you can send those in the chat, because following the sequence, we're going to answer some of those as we go through the coast phase, awaiting for the first stage entry, burn, and landing. Just make sure you take us at the launch pad. Let's listen in for the call out of Miko, first and stage SEP, SES-1, grid fin deploy, and fairing separation. engine cut off. Stage separation confirmed. MVAC ignition. Both vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectories. Fairing separation confirmed. And if you're just joining us on the right side of your screen, it's a live look at those 23 Starlink V2 minis exposed to the vacuum of space for the first time. Both the first and second stage have passed the Kármán line. That's that 100-kilometer globally accepted kind of demarcation of space. Uh, the first stage is coasting under its own just velocity. No more thrust is being applied, and it's coasting to its what known as apogee. This is the highest altitude it will reach before it begins its ascent back down to Earth. From Vandenberg, we normally see this range anywhere from 114 kilometers to 118, 19 kilometers. Uh, so keep an eye on the speed and altitude in the bottom left corner of your screen. Once we have Apogee, the first stage will begin its journey back down to the drone ship. Of course, I still love you in the Pacific Ocean. First stage entry burn set to begin tonight, 6 minutes, 14 seconds into flight, or just over 2 minutes from now. That burn will last a total of, uh, double check the math, 50, about 17 seconds tonight uh, as it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. The first stage will also then conduct a landing burn, 7 minutes, 52 seconds into flight, in preparation to land on the drone ship. Now the second stage on the right side of the screen is going to burn basically all the way till the end of tonight's broadcast, 8 minutes 41 seconds into flight. It does still have one more burn it has to do before Starlink deployment. That burn will occur 53 minutes into flight for just 2 seconds to finalize its orbit in preparation for Starlink deployment, 1 hour, 1 minute 54 seconds from liftoff. A SpaceX no longer covers Both broadcasts. To follow nominal trajectories. A SpaceX no longer covers and broadcasts the deployment of Starlink. We'll be ending our broadcast once we have confirmation of booster landing and Seco One, but you can get confirmation of payload deployment via their social media. T plus five minutes into flight. We're going to answer some of your guys' comments and questions in the chat. Just make sure you're taking us at the launch pad. We'll work on answering those live. I see uh, J23A. Where is it landing? The first stage will land on the drone ship, uh, of course I still love you. The second stage will be controlled and sent into a deorbit burn at a later time to bring it back to a designated uh, splashdown location in one of the oceans. Uh, airplane landing, what's your favorite rocket? Ooh, 
Favorite one I've seen? Oh, even that's a hard one to answer because they're all different. Top three, SLS, Starship, Delta Four Heavy. But then Crew Dragon's hard to beat because you're watching people launch into space. It's a hard question. It's a really hard question. David, TLP has 24-7 cameras. That's awesome. That's only because of your guys' support, David. We appreciate that. Joe Dog got here just in time for the best part. We're glad to have you here. We are now just waiting for the call-out of that entry burn set to begin in about 15 seconds from now. Waiting for the call-out there. They have been running slightly different timelines than what they've released lately, so let's listen in for that call. They didn't call it out, but you can see there on your screen a good entry burn start on the first stage as it begins to re-enter it begins to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. There's that call out confirming it. This burn expected to last uh, about 16 seconds, and you can see there it has shut down. Now keep an eye on the speed and altitude on the bottom left corner of your screen. It's always amazing to watch this. We're just 30 kilometers in altitude left on the first stage, but it's still traveling over 6,000 kilometers an hour. But watch that speed as it starts to descend as it approaches the drone ship. Right now, it does not have any powered uh, velocity being applied. It's just slowing down with those grid fins and the booster itself using the thickness of the Earth's atmosphere as it descends down towards the drone ship. The second stage continuing to burn normally, now passing 18,500 kilometers an hour, 147 kilometers in altitude. Spaceflight X, I don't remember the last time they did an RTLS on a Starlink. They are really maxing out the uh, Starlink flights, so they're not doing many RTLSs on them, but they do them with a lot of the commercial missions now for uh, customer payloads. Stage 1 transonic. T plus 7 minutes, 40 seconds into flight. Falcon 9's first stage preparing to land on the drone ship. Of course, I still love you. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to never miss another live launch coverage. And see the, and terminal guidance. You can see the drone ship coming into view there. Drone ship, of course, I still love you. Gridfin's doing their final navigation to the drone ship. They don't always target the center of the ship, but we'll see where it lands tonight. And that looks like a touchdown of the first stage booster 1063 having completed its 17th flight. It last flew 47 days ago. This was the 294th Falcon recovery attempt. The second stage, we now will wait to see that Seco, but that's going to wrap it up for us tonight. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe so you never miss another live launch coverage, docking, undocking, or return to Earth. We're preparing to begin our two-day return to Earth coverage for Crew 7 as they get ready to come home starting tomorrow, and we hope you'll join us for down. that. There's the call-out of Seco 1, and we hope you'll join us for Crew 7's return or on our 24-7 Starbase cam as we, of course, all count down to the launch of IFT-3. That's going to do it for us here tonight from our TLP Canada studio. And on behalf of the entire TLP crew, thank you so much for joining us here. We hope to see you on Discord or in one of the other YouTube chats. And we'll see you next time because space is better together. Good night.